before Jesus is headed into a great spiritual battle. Uh, his allegiance, his commitment, his strength, his scripture knowledge will all be tested in this time. Yeah. And I want you to notice that in verse number one, the Bible said, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit, first of all, into the wilderness. So in this time of great temptation and trial and uh, allegiance and commitment, where his commitment and strength and allegiance will be tested, he is all by himself. The Bible said he was led by the Spirit into uh, the wilderness. So the wilderness is not a place where a lot of people like to hang out. People don't hang out in the wilderness. And, and so he's all by himself. There's no hotel. There's no Holiday Inn. There's no McDonald's. Amen. There's no uh, McBundles and McDoubles. He's all by himself. And there he is uh, being, facing a spiritual test. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying to you, sometimes we do need uh, to get alone with God. Amen. To get alone with God. I'm glad for church. I'm glad for Sunday morning. I'm glad for Wednesday night. I'm glad for all the different occasions that we have to get together. And there's actually something really special in my view about getting together at the house of God. Amen. I'll tell you what, I sure have appreciated the opportunity to be in the house of God this morning. And there's something strange in our land going on because it seems like they'd shut down every church if they could because they're afraid they'll spread China virus, but they don't mind if you riot and they don't mind if you go to the strip club and they don't mind if you drink liquor. And come on, you know Say amen. They almost feel like preaching. I'm not interested in shutting the church down. I'm interested, in, guess what, in worshiping God and assembling together in a safe and respectful manner. I sure am, amen, in the house of God. But I'll tell you what, I'm glad for church, but the truth is sometimes there's going to have to be a time when you get alone with God. When you go out into the wilderness and Brother Jason's not preaching and Jason's not screaming at you and there's no some nobody singing and leading you in worship and you go get alone with God in the wilderness and have an encounter with him. Now sometimes we need to get alone with God as a source of spiritual life so that we can have a, an experience with God so that we can know him on an intimate and personal level but also there's got to be things in your life that will simply drive you into the wilderness that will force you into seclusion that will force you into a spot where nobody else can go with you and nobody else can be there and you'll be all by yourself just you and God and then you'll be tested just like Jesus was and we're going to find out whether we stand when we're driven all by ourselves out into the wilderness Jason's not there to hold my hand the pastor's not there to prom me up here I am alone in this hospital bed all by myself it's 3 o'clock in the morning all my visitors are gone society and here I am all by myself and I've got to have an encounter with God and I'm going to see what I'm really made of and I'm going to see if I really believe this book and I'm going to see if I really believe in this Jesus that I've been talking about for all these years. Guess what? When it's my time to go to the wilderness let me stand. Let me fight. Let me hold the fort and hold the line and not back up for Jesus is my Savior. And the God who's the God of the mountain is also the God of the valley. And so if I'm all by myself, then God give me grace to stand. What do you think? I almost feel like preaching here for a while. You're going to go to the wilderness at some point in your life. I'll just about guarantee you. Uh, and in our, at this point in our society, uh, they say that uh, unless you're somebody famous, you can only have 25 people at a funeral. That's what they say. That's what they tell me. Unless you're somebody famous, you can only have 25 people at your funeral. Now, if you're famous and, and, and they can make a political statement out of it, then you can have 7,000 and they'll never spread COVID. But if you're just me and you and our relatives die, then we can only have 25. You might as well say amen at the funeral. Mama, tell you what, when you go through a funeral, you'll need somebody to hold you up. When you go through a funeral and the loss of a loved one, you need somebody to help hold your hand. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I'm glad for the 25, but if I could get 250, I'd take them too. Amen. But the truth is this, whether I have 25 
a time of temptation, a time of testing, a time of, of a battle. Yeah. And here he is all by himself, alone in the yeah, wilderness. Yeah, and the Bible said in verse number two, being 40 days tempted of the devil. That's a long time. Yeah. Now, when I go through my wilderness, I want it to last for four minutes. Amen. Maybe 40 minutes tops. But I surely don't want it to last for 40 days. You know what? When you go through your wilderness at times, and listen, if you haven't lived long enough to go through a wilderness time, just hang on long enough. Just hang on a little while. And you'll find yourself somehow in some way facing a moment where nobody can help you but Jesus. And in that moment, hallelujah. I'm glad he comes down and rescues me. All oh, glory. And so Jesus goes through this temptation for 40 long days. 40 long days in this spiritual battle. 40 long days in this wilderness journey. 40 long days all by himself. You know what they say is one of the worst punishments that they could ever inflict on a prisoner? Solitary confinement. Amen. Amen. You know what, we are, as a general rule, we are personal kind of people. Yeah. We like uh, um, people. Right. Huh? Right. Most of them anyway. Yeah. Right? right. <laughs> At least we should. Amen. Yeah. Now, sometimes some of us are on the extroverted side, and we like to be in the crowd no matter what. And that's where we find our comfort place. And then some of us are on the introverted side, and we just got like a few friends, an intimate gathering, and a small occasion. But whether I'm an introvert or an extrovert, if you rob me of human companionship for 40 days and you put me out in the wilderness, by the time 40 days rolls around, I'm going to be looking for a hand to shake and a neck to hug. I'll be looking to FaceTime somebody on my iPhone. Hallelujah. I'll be looking to talk to somebody because, man, I miss the human interaction that feeds my soul and gives me strength and uh, encourages me through a smile and allows me to feed off of somebody else's joy and happiness. I, I, I miss the human encouragement. And yet Jesus is in the wilderness all by himself for 40 days and 40 nights. Nobody around, nobody to hold his hand, nobody to shake his hand, nobody to help him, nobody to text, nobody to FaceTime. But guess what? He's got the Father's communion in the wilderness. Hallelujah. I'm glad that the Father never leaves me. I'm glad that even when I leave Him, He does not leave me. Aren't you glad that God holds you up? Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Woo, glory. I almost feel like preaching today. Come on, preach it, brother. Oh, yes. 40 days of temptation lasted a long time. And the Bible said he didn't eat. And he had no, no food. And he had to get, be getting hungry. Uh, and the flesh was being starved. And uh, the, the things that he wanted, he didn't. His physical man wanted anyway. He did not have. Yeah, come on, brother. And then at the end of this thing, in verse number 3, the Bible said, And the devil said unto him, So here I am in the wilderness, nobody around. Uh -huh. 40 long days has passed, no human interaction, no FaceTime, no Facebook, no Instagram, no Twitter, no YouTube, no smiles, no cries, no, no happy moments, no babies born, no, no meals had, no dinner, no Thanksgiving, no turkey legs, no gravy, a cotton beans, hallelujah, or a pig's feet. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> Beans, greens, potatoes, ham, man. Yeah. All right. I don't know that whole thing, but I think I might know one of these days. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to celebrate Thanksgiving here in a few days, will you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes. Amen. They, t they, tell, <laughs> they tell me that they can, you can only have so many people over your house for Thanksgiving. Uh, and I thought to myself, at least the last time I looked, this was still the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen. And nobody, amen. Now, now, I'm not saying that, that, that you want to have a smaller intimate gathering with a few people. That, 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 that's not, I'm not saying that's bad. If you want to play it cautiously, I'm not saying that's bad. But I'm telling you, nobody has a right to tell anybody who we can have in our own homes. Amen. 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 Amen.
Christ. Right. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. And even if you do pay the bills, stay out of my home. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a funny thing to me that every time they say that, you turn around and the governors who are putting that into place, you look at them and they're having big old gatherings themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. like a little bit of hypocrisy to me. Yes, sir. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, that's right, neighbor. Uh -huh. Amen. That's Amen. right, neighbor. Amen. Amen. Jesus uh, is in the wilderness 40 days, 40 nights. Uh, nobody's around, no human interaction, no Thanksgiving dinner, no, no, no collard greens and ham. And here at verse number three, out of all the people that could show up, guess who's got to show up? It's the devil. Amen. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, how, how, how difficult does, does things have to really be in my life? I got no human interaction. I'm going to go through this thing for 40 days. I can't eat any food. My allegiance is being tested. I'm all by myself. Nobody can hold me up. And the very last thing I want to see is the devil. But guess what happens? It's the devil that comes walking right into this situation. Because the devil will do everything he can to sink you. The devil will do everything he can to stop you. The devil will do everything he can to destroy your life. So the devil says, man, this must be a good opportunity to pounce. Jesus has not had any human interaction. He's not had any time with his disciples. And here he is, verse number three. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God. I was watching this thing the other day. and This guy got on television. I'm just going to tell you a story. He got on YouTube. Uh -huh. And he started holding this rattlesnake. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. His boy was holding his rattlesnake. Uh -huh. And he, he kind of like, if thou would be a Christian, play with his rattlesnake. Uh -huh. I'm thinking to myself, no, the only thing I do with a snake is kill it. That's right. Hello. Yeah, come on. So, but we all, come on. Yeah. But we all know that is that has happened, as weird as it is that has happened, and does still happen when down in the southern states, apparently. But 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 it wasn't too long until they got away with playing with the rattlesnake, Brother Tim, until this man on the stage pulled out a bro torch and he lit that torch and got that flame going I, I promise you I watched with my own eyes and he started rubbing that flame across his hand and trying to test his faith and if God if thou be really a Christian God's not going to let you burn I tell you what ladies and gentlemen that is the dumbest stuff I've ever seen in my life you don't have to put your hand to the flame and you don't have to play with a rattlesnake in order to prove your faith in fact you don't have to prove your faith to anybody God knows who you are and you What the devil say? He said, if thou be the son of God, if thou, yeah. if thou he begins to ask Jesus to yeah. prove who he is, yeah. and prove your faith, and yeah. prove yourself. And if you really believe in God, I'll tell you what you should do. You should burn yourself. Or you should not never uh, do anything that's wise. But I'll tell you what, I think that is foolish thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tempting God there. Tempting God, tempting Christ to tempt God. And here he is. He says in verse number three, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. Now, if there was anything that, that, that would be tempting in that moment, it'd probably be after I haven't eaten in a little while to take a stone and make it into a good piece of bread, yeah. a nice warm piece of bread with some butter melted on it yeah. and some, some cinnamon sugar on top. You know what I'm talking about? Makes me hungry. I'm going to go eat me some food. Hallelujah. I mean, it made me like, if I hadn't eaten in a long time, the most I've ever fasted in my life is six days. And by the time six days roll around, I wanted to eat everything under the sun. I'm telling you. I tell you. And so Jesus here he is in the middle of fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And the devil comes to him and says, if you be the son of God, make that stone into bread. I tell you what, Jesus, if he wants to, can turn every stone into bread. But I tell you what, he wasn't there to feast. He was there to fast. He was there to get in contact with God. He was there to know, to know his father. He didn't want the bread of physical food. He wanted the bread of the light. He wanted the power of his father's spirit upon him. And so here he is in the to make turn the stone into bread. Great spiritual test. What do you think? Amen. You ever fasted before? Yeah. You ever get to that place where in like the first two hours it's pretty easy? Yeah. Third hour, I'm thinking about bowl of cereal. 
Uh -huh. Fourth hour, I'm thinking about bowl cereal and cookies. Uh -huh. Come on. In <laughs> and cheeseburgers. Come on. Yeah. And, 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 and it may not be the devil, it's just probably my flesh in about the sixth hour. So if you really, if you really uh, know that you got in contact with God, just go grab yourself some food. And I'll tell you what, most of the time I'll be finding me a hamburger to eat. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not saying that's right, I'm just telling you what I do. Right. Yeah. Amen. I, I, I can tell you the, the truth about me, uh, but that is true. Most of the time, I end up messing that thing up and breaking that fast. But I tell you what, Jesus didn't want any of this bread. Jesus wanted to please his yeah, Father. Amen. Verse number four, let's see how this story shakes out. And I, I preached all this just to get right here. The Bible says, verse number four, and Jesus said, answered him. Anybody got any collard greens? <laughs> no. I'd, I'd be serious. <laughs> <I'm hungry. laughs> uh, what are y'all eating for lunch anyway? And Jesus answered him saying, <laughs> It is written that man shall not live by bread alone. In other words, there's something in human beings that needs something besides uh, biscuits and cornbread and taters and beans. There's something inside us that needs more than cereal and cookies. There's something inside me that needs God. There's something inside me. And that's why people are constantly looking for some way to satisfy them. That's why when I was growing up, all the teenage girls used to cut themselves because there was something on the inside side of them that knew that there was something missing and that, that knew that there was something there that couldn't be satisfied with bread and so they looked for what is that thing but nobody was pointing them to the son of God try to point you to Jesus he's the only thing that can satisfy your soul amen. you know what happens amen. after they amen. Amen. amen you know what happens after they cut themselves for a while that doesn't work that satisfy them and so they move on to other things yeah. Amen. Amen. they move on to other things yeah. and now we have a whole generation of girls that think they're boys and boys who think they're girls yeah. looking for love in all the wrong places yeah. looking for satisfaction in all the wrong ways but I found this Jesus is the only satisfaction yeah. that will satisfy yeah. your soul yeah. 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 Hallelujah. The only one. Thank you. Amen. So after four, after Jesus is tested, he pulls out the sword of the Lord, Ephesians chapter 5. Uh -huh. And he says to the devil, It is written. Yes, sir. Here Jesus is, and he's in a great time of, of a spiritual battle. Uh, he's got to decide who he wants to be. Uh, in the sense that uh, when the temptation of the enemy comes and when the battle rages, there's going to be a moment that people have to decide who they want uh, to be. And I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I want to be. I want to be a Christian. Amen. 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 I didn't say that I'm a perfect uh, believer every moment of every day, but I said I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he's able to keep that. If I have committed unto him against that day, I know he's the son of God. I know I've been redeemed. I know my sins are forgiven. I know my name yeah. thrown down in heaven. I know when he hung on that cross, yeah. he nailed my sins there. Yeah. And they are done and forgotten yeah. and washed away. I know. Listen, man, being a Christian is the greatest yeah. thing you can ever enjoy yeah. in your life. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Then when you get to be a Christian, God also give you some baked beans and taters. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Some brown sugar. Uh -huh. Oh, Amen. yeah. Come on. Hello. Yes, sir. Y'all get hungry like me? Yeah. Amen. I'm trying to make you hungry. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus says, it is written. Here's what I discovered, though. In this moment, Jesus had the will 
to pull out the sword of the Lord, yes, sir. to pull out the scriptures, yes. to pull out the, his, his defense a mechanism to pull out his, his 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 weapon of offense and to go after the devil with the sword of the Lord with the word of God and say it is written he had the will to do it and sometimes when we face our temptations we don't have the will to do it we know what we should do we know what will win the victory we know what will defeat sin we know what will defeat the enemy we know but we don't have the will to pull out the sword. We don't, we're not prepared for the battle. It's not that the sword isn't with us. It's that right now there's something that seems real appealing about that bread. Amen. I'm hungry. Yes, sir. Come on. Amen. I haven't eaten in a while. Come on. I haven't seen anybody in a while. Uh -huh. I'm out here in the wilderness all by myself. Uh -huh. Let me, give it, let me give it to you a different way. I, I'm a young person and I'm tired of being uh, the funny duddy of the group. So let me, you know what? I'm tired of being the uncool one. So just, yeah, just go ahead and hand me that beer and I just hold it in my hand and I've got the sword. I could easily pull it out and defeat the devil, but I don't have the will to do it because in that moment, that's that. Looks awfully good. I submit to you that there are a lot of Christians who will lay down and get defeated by the devil all the time. They have the sword to defeat him. They have the sword to knock him out. They have the sword to send him running, but they have lost the will. They have lost the desire. They have lost the fight. And actually, it's not that they necessarily lost it. It's that the devil looked at them and said, look over there at that bread. Don't you want some? And the man got up in the middle of the night and he said, that bread looks awfully good. And so let me go ahead and climb in my computer like some sort of reptilian figure and entertain myself on the filth of pornography. I've got the sword to stop it, but I don't have the will. I don't have the will. People, if you, if you, at least if you've been brought up in this church and churches like it, you've got the sword to stop it. Yes, sir. You've got enough spiritual armor to know better. Amen. You've got enough knowledge of Scripture to pull out the sword and say, Devil, I don't care whether you tell me I'll look cool if I do that or not. I don't want to look cool. I want to look like a believer in Jesus. I want to look like my Father. I want to look like a Christian. Amen. So Jesus meets this temptation at a time where he not only has the ability to stop it, but he also has the will and the desire yeah. to stop the devil. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like this. You get in an argument with somebody and you know that God's will for you is that you would wrap that argument up. Yeah. Hello? Amen. You know God's will for you is that you would stop that argument and put it to rest before it goes too big and gets too out of hand. And before you say something, you'll regret it. And before you do something, you shouldn't do. And you know what you should do. And you actually have the sword to pull it out and stop it if you want to. But the truth is, for some reason, you just don't want to. Yeah, come on, brother. Right. right. Now, I would imagine, now maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm preaching to people that, that have never experienced this, but I would imagine that we've all been there a time or two. That's for sure. Amen. Where we had the ability to stop it, yes, sir. but we just didn't really want to. Right. So I asked myself the question, and I'm not done preaching just yet. Come on, preach it. I asked myself the question, why did Jesus have the will and the desire, why did he have the want to, to defeat this thing? Because I guess he could have easily went the route that we go sometimes when we just say, okay, give me that bread. Uh -huh. That's right. Give me what my flesh wants. Uh -huh. 
Look at verse number one of Luke chapter number four. The Bible said, And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give you these points here quickly, and I'm going to be through. Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from where? Jordan. That's the river Jordan where he was baptized by John the Baptist. Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. You know what? Maybe being full of the Holy Ghost might help you have the will to pull out the sword and stop it. What do you think? Do you think maybe we need to get filled with the Holy Ghost afresh? Do you think maybe we need to return to some Pentecostalism? I hate to sound too Pentecostal, but, but do you think maybe we ought to return to realizing that it's not by might nor by power, and it's not in the ability of my flesh to stop the devil? I gotta have some of that Holy Ghost. I gotta have some spirit living down on the inside of me that give me the desire to pull out the sword. So sometimes we need to go back. Pull out the sword and stop it. Amen. Amen. I watched. I've watched people flounder, flail, feel, kick and scream, and always look like they was about to go under. But as long as they were pursuing the Holy Ghost, they never did. That's right. As long as they were on the altar saying, Holy Ghost, fill me up, they never did. There's a time when maybe I look down out into the deep end and their head went under, but they was on the altar the next Sunday, and because the Holy Ghost met them at that altar, guess what? The head popped back up, and they said, I'm still here, and I haven't drowned yet. But I'll tell you what, when we stop pursuing the Spirit of God, when we stop pursuing a real and living relationship with God, until I watch your head go under for the last time. Amen. That's right. Come on. You gotta have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. Yes. What do you think? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not saying you gotta be like me and jump and shout and all this sort of thing. You do what you do. Holy Ghost may move upon you, and He may just move upon you to weep and cry, and that's okay. It don't have to be like me, but I'm telling you, you're not supposed to be alone in the fight. The Holy Ghost is saying, kid, will be there with you and give you the strength to say, Jason, pull out that sword and cut that devil's head off. But sometimes when we don't have the will to pull it out, it's because... We've quit pursuing a relationship yeah, right. with that's the right. Spirit of the Living God. Right. Good, right. Holy Ghost, we need you. Yes. We need you. Yes. We need you. We need you as a church. We need you as a people. Yes. We need you as individuals. We need you. Yeah. Yes. We need you. Yes. We cannot do it on our own. Yes. We can go through the routines, Holy Ghost. We can go through the motions. We can. We can come in and open the service up the way we always do and sing the songs we always sing and preach the way we always preach and dismiss the way we always dismiss. But then we just be going through the motions. Holy Ghost, we need you. We need you. We need you. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what's going to happen in the days to come, but I know this. We are heading into spiritual battle, and we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit of God. There's got to be something in that pulls on the resources of the Holy Spirit of God and the Holy Ghost gives us the strength to stand. What do you think? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come it's on, almost man. time for me to be quiet. Preach it, almost time for me to close my Bible. But I ain't quite ready just yet. Amen. Go back with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 3. I guess when you don't let me preach for two weeks, you might get two weeks worth of sermon and one. <laughs> two for the price of one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Go with me to Matthew chapter 3, and I want to look back really quickly. And I say really quickly because I mean it, and I'm going to try to abide by what I said because I need to be a man of my word. So Matthew chapter 3 is now, we're now we're looking at the moments leading up to Jesus being tempted. So these were the moments that led right up until Jesus going out into the wilderness. Matthew chapter 3, look at 
verse number 13. Are you there? Amen. The Bible said, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan uh, unto John to be baptized of him. Notice what Jesus did. Why did he have the will to pull out the sword in the next story? Notice where he went. He went to Jordan River. He went to where the will of God was being performed. He went to where God was at, where God was glorified, where God was magnified. He went to a place where he could meet with God. Let me just say this, ladies and gentlemen. If you're trying to train for a marathon, you're not going to be served very well at a donut shop. That's right. Hello? Amen. If you're trying to train for a marathon, you're not going to be served very well hanging out all day in a candy shop. And some people try to tell me they're training for the Christian life, but they want to hang out all day at the bar and tavern. And they want to hang out all day in the casino. And then, come on, they want to hang out all day. If you guys get quiet, I'll preach harder, I promise. <laughs> That the reality is this. There are some places, depending on who you want to be, and that's why I've been saying for four weeks, you got to choose who you want to be. Depending on who you want to be is where you need to figure out where you need to hang out. If you want to look like me and have a big old spare tire on the front, on the front, hang out in the donut shop. But if you want to be an Olympic athlete, you got no business in the in the, in the donut shop. I'll tell you what's going to happen if you want to be an athlete to hang out in the donut shop. It ain't going to be too long until the donut shop starts hanging out in you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll be coming to me saying, I don't know if I really want to be an athlete anymore. But that, that's because you've been hanging out in the donut shop. That's right. Yeah. Hello? That's right. Amen. That's right. Come on, I might preach for a minute. <laughs> You gotta be careful. Now I like donuts, by the way. I never wanted to be an athlete, <laughs> but I do want to be a Christian. Yes, sir. Amen. And I know that as a Christian, there's some places that are gonna strengthen my walk with God, yeah. and there's some places that are gonna hinder. Come on, right? Amen. Sure. Yeah. Some places are gonna hinder. Amen. You gotta decide who you want to be. Right. Jesus was able to pull out the sword because he had been in the right places. Yeah. Jesus was able to pull out the sword because he ignored the wrong voices. Look at verse number 14. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. You know who John is? John is the preacher. John is the preacher and told Jesus to not do the will of God. Do you all see that? That's right, yeah. What was the will of God for Jesus? Be baptized by John in the river Jordan. And when Jesus got down to John, John said, I know you shouldn't be baptized to me. I have need to be baptized of you. And I tell you what Jesus said to John, that he's the greatest man that ever came out of the womb of a woman, the greatest prophet. So I've got no problem. I'm not saying John's bad. I'm just saying sometimes you got to be careful who you listen to. And I don't care if it's a preacher or They asked a famous preacher the other day, and I'm closing, I promise. I'm closing my Bible, because I could I could probably preach for about seven hours, probably. <laughs> they asked a famous preacher the other day, and they got him on national television. And they asked him, they said, so do you think that only Christians can have a relationship with God? With God? Now, this guy's a pastor of a Christian church. In fact, one of the biggest Christian churches in America. And they asked him, do you think only a Christian can have a relationship with God? And by the way, the answer is yes. yes. Amen. That's not controversial no, from Scripture. It may be controversial in our weird 2020 society, but it's not controversial according to the Bible. What Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. There's only one way. Muhammad is not the way. Buddha is not the way. The government is not the way. Well, you know, I think when Jesus said uh, that, that, you know, he was the way, the truth, and the life, that, that, that he was kind of opening up a path. But the truth is God is love, and you can have a relationship with God because God loves it. Uh -oh. And I heard that, and I thought to myself, something, something don't sound right to me. Right. 
The preachers of last generation would have told her emphatically because it would have been an opportunity to witness of the gospel in front of the whole world. Yeah. Jesus is the Savior. Okay. I wish Oprah would interview me. Amen. For some reason she won't. I don't know why. Right? <laughs> I heard that and I said to myself, something's wrong about that. Uh-huh. Two weeks ago, this same pastor was kicked out of his church uh-huh. for having an affair yeah. on his wife. Right. And the mistress, when the mistress came forward, she said she'd been in a relationship with him for four months. Uh-huh. And never even knew that he was a Christian. That's sad. Something's wrong there, folks. Why did I say that? Because I want to crucify that pastor? No, I didn't even say his name. I say that because I don't care if it's a pastor or a preacher or a pope or somebody that you that you know from around the way that thinks that they're a Christian. You need to obey scripture, not the preachers. Amen. You need to obey the word of God, which is why every time we come to church, I say, open up your Bible. Yeah. Right. I'm not the pope. Right. The Bible's true. We need to. Right. What do you think? We need to obey Scripture. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. Sometimes what happens is people start listening to too many preachers. Yeah. And the preachers are telling them things that are deceptive. And they know they're deceptive. Right. And they know behind the scenes they're having affairs. And they know that. Right. Amen. Amen, bro. Yes, sir. You be careful. Be careful. What did John do? John said, Jesus, you don't have any reason to be baptized. Jesus said, Listen, we're going to do what the Father wants. Yeah, right. Baptize me in the water. Yes, sir. And Jesus ignored the wrong voices right. and began to listen to the Father. Yes. Yes. And then when he went to temptation, he was prepared yeah. because he had already started ignoring wrong voices, yes. right. listening to the correct voice. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I, I, could, I could literally preach for another hour probably, but I won't, I won't bore you. So let's be dismissed in prayer.